Stan Gibalisco here to explain the concept of coefficient of performance in relationship to a device called a heat pump. A heat pump. If you're into alternative energy at all, you've heard of a heat pump, and you've probably also heard the term efficiency used erroneously in regards to the way that a heat pump works. You may have heard, for example, or read in the specifications for a particular heat pump, that it has an efficiency of, oh, let's just say approximately 200%. Well, of course, that's impossible. <clears throat> Nothing can, can have an efficiency of more than 100%. The, the total energy that you put into something can never exceed, or pardon me, the total energy that you get out of something can never exceed the total energy that you put in, or the total work that you put out can never exceed the total work that you put in. The, the key word there is total. If we're talking about a heat pump with an efficiency of 200%, what they're really meaning to tell you is that the coefficient of performance is 200%. And what does that mean? Well, what a heat pump will actually do in the usual case, let's just suppose that reservoir B is your house, and it's cold outside. But you have a ground source heat pump that gets heat energy out of the ground, which is maybe in the 50s or so degrees Fahrenheit all the time, and transfers that energy to your house to warm up your house. Even if the temperature here is in the 50s, a heat pump can transfer energy to your house and drive the temperature inside your house well up into the 70s or even 80s. Now we're talking about Fahrenheit degrees here, not Celsius. You'd never want a house that was 70 degrees Celsius. Trust me on that one. Not even 50 degrees Celsius would you want. If you happen to live in one of the places where the ground has uh, some significant thermal energy in it, like some places in South Dakota in the Black Hills, for example, uh, down near Edgemont, um, Hot Springs, places like Thermopolis, Wyoming, Saratoga, Wyoming, there are all sorts of places throughout the western United States that have excellent heat energy available from the ground and a ground source heat pump can do an excellent job in such a case. Now if you have 200 percent coefficient of performance what that means is that the ratio of the energy transferred from the reservoir A to reservoir B by this heat pump, the ratio of the energy transferred to the ratio to the amount of electrical energy that it takes to move that energy that is the electrical energy that it takes to to make the heat pump move that energy and if you still have a little bit of a problem if you think that somehow that too is impossible just think for a moment about the moons of Saturn, and then return to the Earth to continue this idea. Think, for example, about a water pipe, a big pipe, say a pipe that supplies water for the purpose of, oh my, doing some sort of tremendous amount of work, some sort of hydraulic system. Uh, you know, you can imagine a hydraulic lift, for example. 
or any other device where this water flows through and supplies the necessary energy to make that hydraulic lift work. And in order to turn the hydraulic lift on, you have a little valve with a little a little knobby like, you know, the the captain's steering wheel on a boat, maybe a couple of feet in diameter, and you sit there and you turn that thing around a few times and you open this valve. Well, it doesn't take you very much energy to turn that thing, but the amount of energy supplied then by this water is practically unlimited. The coefficient of performance in this case, should you decide to define it, would be far greater, limited only really by the amount of water available in the reservoir, and that would be potential energy, reservoir A, and then the hydraulic lift would dissipate the energy or do it in the form of work as reservoir B. You can think of it like that. So that is what coefficient of performance really is talking about in a heat pump. It's talking about the ratio of the heat energy transferred from the reservoir, such as the ground, to the second reservoir, such as your house. The ratio of that energy to the amount of electrical energy that it takes to move that energy. And that can be considerably greater than 100%. Most heat pumps, I believe, operate, good ones, operate between 200 and possibly even up to 300%. I could be mistaken on that, but they're, they're certainly nowhere near uh, what you would get with something like a hydraulic lift in this example. But uh, you don't hear about coefficient of performance in relation to systems like this hydraulic lift. You do hear about this in relationship to a heat pump. Which, by the way, is a very good alternative, <laughs> assuming that you can read me here, is a very good alternative for getting your house warm. Certainly better than heating directly with electricity in which case the efficiency is pretty close to 100% because just about all the electricity that you run into those heating elements gets dissipated as heat. But it sure costs a heck of a lot of money to do that. Wouldn't you like to cut your heating electric bill in half or even to one-third of what it was? The only thing is that it takes a little bit of investment up front. All these systems take that. Maybe that's where some of that extra government money could go towards grants for people or loans for people to help them do this kind of stuff and save the world. Stan Gibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.